Church here in Wilmington, Delaware. Been here since 1993. A couple weeks we'll be celebrating my 18th anniversary as a pastor of this church. I am from Niagara Falls, New York. I'm married to a wonderful woman named Renee, who is the executive director of Beautiful Gate Outreach Center. And they have two daughters, Asaya and Corey, and a granddaughter, Malia. Many people express uh, that since we don't own any gun factories, we don't make any guns, the guns are coming in. You know, we, have, we have got to become or take on uh, an anti-violent spirit. And I believe there's, there needs to be a real cultural shift of what's our new normal as it relates to violence. And so now everybody's carrying a gun. And especially our young people are arming themselves. And since they already have a spirit of nihilism, of hopelessness, and that um, they themselves don't expect to live long. I have been saying to my colleagues and to the politicians, uh, specifically the African-American politicians, that there is a new oppressor that's oppressing uh, black people and minorities in the inner city. And we need to begin to confront that oppressor the same way that Malcolm and our foreparents did during the movement of the 60s. And what is happening is we are allowing this violence to be our new normal instead of standing up and saying, you know, enough is enough. And uh, so I think the whole notion about curbing the violence, we need to look at ourselves and say, as a people and as a community, um, this is unacceptable. Uh, law enforcement. And, and, um, and the government has a greater role with drug interdiction, and that is the stopping the flow uh, of it coming into our, to our community. A lot of folk getting, getting paid, and what you see at the grassroots levels, and the street hustlers, for which I am a former street hustler, selling drugs, um, you know, that's the real low rank and file. What we really need to do is get to the higher level. And I refuse to believe that, uh, that law enforcement cannot name those people and go after uh, the, the ones who are really making the big dollars. And then we need to, as a community, address again the hopelessness that I was talking about um, and, and some of the other social ills that are plaguing our community that, that leads us to uh, this drug culture, uh, which a byproduct of that is violence. Uh, we didn't become this way overnight, and it's not going to change overnight. Um, I believe the, the community of faith, the houses of faith, the preachers, the imams, um, the black entrepreneurs, the elected officials, and then the dialogue between the mothers and fathers. You know, I was saying to someone just the other day, if, you know, Junior comes by and he got a, a boatload of groceries from BJ's. And you know Junior ain't got no job, you know, and, and you uh, accept the food. Don't ask how he got it, you know. Uh, and, and believe me, that's happening. And so people are winking uh, at um, the drug culture and it's our and it being our new norm. Uh, we have got to stand up and say, you know, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. That along with uh, the situation with the, the AIDS problem, the drug problem, and the health disparities, we are now just becoming somewhat docile and accepting that. That is not our new norm. That is unacceptable. And uh, the, the people who can really make a difference need to speak up and start uh, dialoguing for the solution. There is as much drugs in the inner city as it is in the suburbs. And in some cases, it is different drugs. Uh, but the violence and the
killing uh, is happening uh, in the inner city. But the same, same crack, same pot, same ecstasy, same drugs that are in the inner city, they're in the bedroom communities of our suburbs as well. Do you think that we as a collective group can change the policies on drugs and guns in the United States? We mean who? We mean people. Just people in general, not African Americans. And, and, and the answer to that question is yes. But I would say African African Americans, but I I'd say that we have, as a group because we basically can't do it alone. Yeah, well I like to. No, but let me let me that's my point. It is not so much doing it on our own, but we have got to stand up and say it's unacceptable. When they would not let us go into the, the front doors of white establishments, when we had to sit in the balcony, when we had to drink from colored fountains, when white folk put hoods on and ran through our neighborhoods terrorizing, you know, we, we as a people said, this is enough. And I'm, I believe that the violence and the drug culture that is pervasive in the inner city, to me, has to be addressed like we addressed uh, civil rights. Uh, and so, yes, we need other communities to, uh, to build a coalition with us, to lend their voice and their influence and their power. But if we don't say enough is enough, so I think Primarily, the, 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 the African American and Latino community um, and the minorities in the inner city, um, we have to begin to say enough is enough. It is our children that we are burying. It's our children that are becoming HIV infected and impacted. Our families that are afflicted. Because when you look at the larger uh, culture, the dominant culture, you don't see the same kind of crazy numbers that you see happening. And if, and if it was the other way around, you'd be seeing Washington pouring in. Um, in my day growing up, we used the word buku, meaning a whole lot of money. You'd be seeing them for sending a lot of money uh, into those communities to address the issues. Which is almost like with HIV AIDS, when that was seen as a white male disease, money was coming from everywhere. Now that the incidence of HIV and AIDS has been reduced in the dominant culture, um, monies are drying up all of a sudden, while the numbers among blacks are increasing. And HIV AIDS is just uh, an example. You see the same with cancer, with diabetes, and certainly the same uh, with, uh, with this virus. as a collective group can change the policies on drugs and guns in the United States? We mean who? We mean people. Just people in general, not African Americans. And the answer to that question is yes.